Hello and welcome to another episode of Pokemath. Here in episode number 61, we're going to be taking a look at, well, Palpat, among other things. So, let's get to it. So, for today's question and topic, there's a little background first. So, when playing the Pokemon TCG, sequencing, maximizing the probability of drawing what you need is, of course, very important. And indeed, Slowpoke, it is something that's the principle is very easy to understand, but it's quite hard to master in practice. See people mess it up over and over again, and, well, I do it too. So, uh, we all do it once in a while. But the thing is, when you're using an ability in the game that lets you draw more cards, and today's example is going to, for instance, be Genesect V's uh, Fusion Strike system, we often see people just mindlessly burning cards in order to increase the number of cards they can draw. And let's be honest, that actually makes perfect sense most of the time. Because what if one of the cards you burn actually shuffle cards back in your deck? How does the probability then change? And we're going to talk a little more about that here today. So to formalize today's question, well, let's put it like this. Is playing a card that puts cards back in your deck when trying to hit a certain card, a good idea. And uh, to, for today's example, let's use today's list. And that's gonna be this following list, and it's played by Rowan. So uh, thanks, Rowan, I found it on uh, Limitless. Well done on your placements. We're gonna borrow the list today. So we're looking at Mu V Max, something that's been played over and over again for the longest time, and even in the current format, it still sees play. Of course, it's a good deck. And the point is, this here contains a Pokemon that lets you draw cards as an ability, and that's Genesec V. But you can also formalize this to other things that let you draw cards where well, you want to burn stuff. Could be a uh, B-Barrel, for instance, but uh, we just want to use a Genesec today. So we're going to set up a scenario. We're going to look at the probability of uh, hitting certain card or a certain card and how that probability is altered when you are burning cards. And in this particular case, whether you're playing Palpat, for instance, you see this Palpat down in the corner, that's the important card here. Because often, it's a card you can burn, surely, but the card will shuffle at least one card back in your deck, and does it actually alter your decision? The, the reason I find this super interesting is pretty straightforward, because I was judging Masters at EYC uh, recently, and even in round one, I walk around the table and I see exactly this scenario pop up. And I already started writing on the script and I was like, this is an excellent scenario or excellent example of this. So of course I hovered a little about the table and see what the player did. And um, to my, wouldn't say surprise, I was just very happy with the outcome he chose correctly. So let's see what the correct choice actually is so you can get back to see which choice this, this did this player make. Now, and uh, the idea is here is how to calculate is just to use our good old friend, the hypergeometric distribution. Something I've covered in many episodes before, but let's go briefly over to people who are new to the channel. Maybe also can see, you know, what is it exactly? And the idea is, it looks like this. Looks scary, I know, but to pin it down or put it in a very simplistic way, view your card decks, say, in two ways. There's the card you want to draw, so it's all the possible ways of drawing X items from a set of M possible items. In this particular case, we're going to be looking at, say, you want to hit your DTE with Mew. If you don't hit your DTE, you ain't attacking. So that's how simple it is. So we want to split the deck into two parts. The part that contains DTEs, that's this part, and the part that does not contain DTEs. Simple as that. You take these two things, and it's about, uh, well, the binomial coefficient, basically, for calculation. But always refer back to episode one if you have some difficulty understanding. Or any other episode where we use this, right? So the point here is you then divide this by n over n, well, capital N over lowercase n, which represents the all possible ways of drawing n unordered cards from a deck of n cards. And we're gonna have some assumptions here today, just like usual. But remember, you can just do this for your own example as well. We're just choosing a example today. So of course, we need to know how many cards are left in the deck. We're gonna do some kind of mid game. I think we'll start at 30 cards. How many DTEs do you have left in your deck? We could choose any number, but we're gonna to stick to four. Maximize the outs here, right? So that also means that there will be no DTEs in the prize cards, fair enough. And of course we say we have one fusion strike system left and it lets us draw up to six cards. So we are basically assuming that your entire field is fusion strike Pokemon, but anybody watching this should know how Genesec works otherwise. 
look it up. So we're gonna draw until six, that's okay. And that's correct. We will assume that if you decide not to use the pal pad, for instance, that's when you draw one card. So you're basically sitting with the following scenario. Hmm, I could draw one card in my fusion strike system now. However, I have a pal pad in my hand I can burn. And the question now becomes, if I burn the palpet or play it, I need to shuffle at least one supporter back. By doing so, yes, I can now draw two cards, but my deck size just increased by one. How does that change, well, the probability? And we can, of course, also compare it with what if I decide to shuffle two back? Is that still a good idea? Does that still improve my probability of hitting the card I need? In this case, a DTE. And well, how to solve it? Let's look at it here. We want to see the probability of getting at least one TT, because if you hit two, fine, three, fine, four, also fine. Unlikely, but still fine. You need to just hit at least one, so you are able to attack. That's the principle. So we cannot calculate this for a number of things. We're going to calculate first the base case scenario. You do not play Palpat. So then you draw just one card, essentially. That's the base case, right? What then? Then we're going to do it for when you Palpat for one. And you may have guessed it, also do Palpat for two. And we can also at the same time also compare the differences in probabilities here. So I'm later going to just show you a nice Excel sheet here. We're going to just hover around really professional. <clears throat> but of course, for you guys who just want to investigate a little on your own, I'm going to put a link in the description where I also shared the sheet for you guys to look at. So you can also do it in your own time. So I think that's going to be very helpful. For the case here, Let's assume we have a deck left with 30 cards. That means the capital N will be 30. We got 40 T's in there, so we just need to hit one of them. That's the base case, but you can do it for any number that you like, essentially, right? So it will be looking like this if you plug in the numbers. That seems quite okay to me, okay? So let's try out some different numbers here. And yeah, we can of course just try it for other numbers as well. So these are just the ways we can do it. So let's try out for just the first number. And then we can just go to the Excel sheet, play a little around with it, and then hopefully draw a few conclusions from it. So let's first calculate our base case. That's all the scenarios for not playing Palpat. So if we start with the very much, or very most basic case here, 30 card deck, 40 ETs, we wanna draw one card. That means we plug in the numbers here. In this case, it's pretty straightforward because we don't have to add different probabilities because remember, if we can draw two cards, we have two different outcomes here, essentially. We can draw one DT or two DTs. Of course, we can also draw zero, but the point is we have to add the probability together of drawing one or two if we would draw more cards. For three cards, we have to add in the possibility of drawing one, two, or three. In this base case here, it's just one time we solve it, and that's it, because we're going to draw one card. Summing it up, it will give you, this is in decimal numbers, but translate into percentage quickly, it will be 13.33% of hitting it. Not bad. That's our base case, everyone. And of course, we can then do this for all kinds of scenarios, so different size of the deck. This is for 30, we can try it with 29, 28, and I'm gonna do it all the way down to, in this case, four. Because if we go lower, it doesn't make any sense. And with four, you have a 100% probability of hitting it, assuming you have four DTs in deck, of course. Again, you can alter the numbers yourself and try it out. And yeah, we can, of course, also then do it for Palpat with one and Palpat with two. So now we're gonna go and take a look at this here. So now I'm gonna do this uh, very, very magic move and then we're gonna see some Excel sheets here. So if I should do something like this, we can now look at the Excel sheet. Excellent, I would think. So I hope it's zoomed enough in. And like I said before, you can always just go and check the description and then I put a link for the file myself so you can go and check it out. We have the base case up here. This is the number of cards you draw, one till six say. And this is the size of the deck. So you can already see I go all the way down to very low numbers, right? Where the probability also becomes a one. So let's just move a few, few, uh, wow, through a few of them. And then we can see the base case was up here. That's 13.33%. Okay, so if I then go for the 29 card deck, it would of course increase the probability, which makes perfect sense because smaller deck, the higher chance that we actually draw a card we need. And of course, it should be a monitor increasing function. So bup, bup, bup should just go up and up and up as we go down. That's okay. That's the base case. What about now we decide to shuffle in one pal pad? That is, we play pal pad for one. Now, in this case here, you have to remember, if we pay pal pad for one, we're drawing minimum two cards. 
because we have one more card to draw. That's why I marked this here in yellow, because it's not really relevant anymore. And then, of course, we can already see that this will actually increase. How do I see that? That's because you will compare this cell, which is H14, you will compare that with the case board. If we did not do it, that means you have to compare H14, I believe. Yeah, yeah okay. We compare that with H5. The difference between these two will represent the increased probability in this case, if it's a plus number, a positive number, plus number. Well done, Stefan. And of course, it will be a negative number if we decrease. But I'll do these comparisons for all the different cells. You're going to see that in just a moment. Because here below, I have the same scenario for now if we would play Palpat for two. And here I calculate the individual probabilities for all the different scenarios, just like before, all the way from 30, all the way down to, well, minimum size of the deck that we would consider in this case. Again, I'll invite you just to take a look at it and see if I made any mistakes. I hope not. If so, let me know. That's what we have a chat for, right? Or comment section. Now we have a number of differences. That's going to be interesting. Notice that something is marked in red that represents the lowest probability increase or decrease. And in the green one represents the highest of a given row, the highest increase in probability. So for instance, here we're comparing the situation of drawing two cards versus one card, given that we palpat for one versus not playing palpat at all. And we see here it will increase our probability by 11.18%. That's already good news, because if we then move down the list here, we see that this probability would just further increase. Great stuff. All the way to the maximum, which is found right here, by 22.22%. For a lot of people, when we play with a small size of the deck, it makes perfect sense just to draw extra cards, even if we put one card back. There's also be represented here that this actually would increase the probability up to a certain point. That's where it becomes interesting because it's not always the best choice. It will always be a choice, uh, the best choice in the sense that you should do it maybe. You can just look around all the numbers here. We only observe positive numbers. And what is the quick conclusion here? Well, that is regardless of the size of your deck, you should always palpat for one and draw one more card. Of course, there's only si times where the increase is so small that it almost doesn't matter. Like take this one here. We're comparing six versus five cards drawn in a nine card deck. Then you see that the probability increase only becomes 0.32%, which is marginal, very marginal. So the idea is, or the conclusion is in this case for comparing drawing one versus zero, yeah, it's a great idea, always. But now let's move down to the case where we're gonna palpat for two, because what if you wanna palpat for two? Of course, we do not take into account here that there's other reasons why you want to palp at a certain supporter back. We are just assuming you really need to hit the DT, otherwise you are done for. So here we're comparing the second case scenario, that is you shuffle back two versus not playing it at all. You still see up here in the beginning, a lot of positive numbers. Quite nice, right? And again, we have marked in green and red as like before. And we see indeed here, a lot of positive numbers. However, now it becomes different. If I move down to smaller deck sizes here, you start seeing there's some negative numbers appearing. And this here simply represents that, hey, now it's not a good idea to play Palpat for two instead of doing, well, no Palpat at all. So you see here indeed that there are cases where you should not do it. I would like to add here, when you get to these cases here, you don't really need the probability if you played quite a quite a long time or just know it a little bit, you get this nice intuition or a nice intuitive touch to it, I would say. So you already know that if my deck size is five, should I really shuffle back to more? You can quickly calculate the chances here, right? But you can still see that now we really quantified the difference. So we can see there is indeed a negative number associated here. And now the final thing we want to take a quick look at, and again, guys, you can just take a look at it in the file I'm going to upload. But here we can compare difference three, which is the difference between shuffling one and two back. So we just look at the difference between the last two matrices up here. And then of course, seeing there's a lot of red here, just represents the lowest increase of a given row. Okay. And again, we can just see here that yes, these numbers are all positive between two and one. Are they now? Let's take a look. And it turns out that they indeed are, which is really great. So that means that in terms of the difference between two versus one, why there, there's always somewhat an increase so that's okay 
but you can do, definitely just see here that this difference here is very very nice shuffling one or two back so let me first just very clarify this here is of course the difference between well are we shuffling one card extra back in deck or not so of course you should notice here when you check this out what the differences are made here if i look at this cell here i'm going to cheat over here look we're comparing here in line 43 we're comparing h29 minus h36 so that means we go up to h36 which is this one here and this number will now be compared to what did i say again h29 which is of course this one up here there you go so you compare these two scenarios here so you subtract this here from each other and you get this case here in this case here again 29 minus the 36 cell and you see already here that this one is larger than this one here so you see that the additional benefit you get from only shuffling one back that's why all the numbers here are of course positive so these are just very interesting scenarios and the main reason i saw this because it's not the first time at uic that i did see this happen where the choice was should i actually shuffle back but it happens quite a bit and you could think about it also happening with other cards like this was just a case of happening with palpat but let's face it uh, you could also do the same with ordinary rot when i was in format or i believe super rot will be reprint the next next set don't hold me up on that one that's just what i've seen somewhere but the idea is there's always going to be cards that if you burn it you're going to shuffle stuff back in your deck thereby altering the probability quite a bit so this is something i just really want to show you guys because i found it super interesting now and um I think with that said, that, that should be enough uh, touring for now. You can always take a look at it yourself. So let's go back here once more. And then we go back and see what we're going to look at here for conclusions. So what did we learn today? Well, let's just summarize in the briefest manner I can possibly do. First and foremost, playing Palpat or similar, like I said, for one, is always a good idea. There's always an increase in the probability of doing so. So that's just always a good idea. And that was also a concluding remark also what the person did at uic so well done whoever you were <laughs> i did not notice the name but well done good choice you choose wisely and of course playing palpat for two or similar can be a good idea of course it's always worse than the first one because you are just increasing your deck more one while not getting more draw out of it you're still getting only plus one in draw but it still increases over the base case scenario so the reason we did this also because there could be scenarios where you really would well like to get two certain supporters back for later but here we just blindly looked at the case where you really need to hit your dt otherwise game over i would say or it becomes uphill from here so summarize it it can be a good idea not always there are indeed negative scenarios here but okay ladies and gentlemen this was all for episode 61 i hope you enjoyed uh, this class in stefan's classroom and i hope to see you back for another class in Stephen's classroom. Bye-bye.